God bless your family, Christ-like church, loved ones and friends. Um, we are here during this midweek. I pray that you receive God's word today. I just wanted to spend a few moments with you during this midweek. I pray that everybody, everybody is doing well. I want to be honest with you and let you know that things have been tough not being with God's people. But I'm always praying for you. You know that I'm always love I'm always here to tell you how much I love you. Please call me. Don't hesitate to contact me if you need me. And so uh, we're going to spend a few minutes in the Bible tonight in Mark chapter 5, a very, very familiar passage of Scripture. And so we're going to pray, and then we'll get into God's Word. So let us pray. God, we love you, and we honor you, and we worship you. We thank you, God, for everything that you have done for us, God. God, we pray that you watch over all of our families, our loved ones, our friends, God. God, bless this world that we live in. And God, we ask right now in Jesus' name that you would bless your lesson tonight, God. So God, I love you, and I praise you, and I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, Mark chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 21. We're going to read from 21 to 24. Then we will skip to verses 35 through 43. Because there's a story in the middle of this about the woman with the issue of blood. And we will deal with that on next week. All right. So verse 21 says, When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell to his feet. He fell at his feet, excuse me, and pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with them. A large crowd followed and pressed around them. Verse 35, while Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignore what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler. Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loud. He went in and said to them, why, are the, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the, the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Amen. Amen. So here Jesus is. He has crossed the lake. And he's met by a large crowd. This large crowd, they're by the lake, they're waiting for Jesus, but there's someone there of importance to the people. A man named Jairus. He was a synagogue ruler. He was a synagogue ruler. And so the synagogue's ruler's job, it, it, well, he was responsible for worship in the synagogue. 
He was responsible for running the weekly school. He was responsible for the upkeep of the kingdom, making sure that the people in the building around the synagogue were taking care of all the things that the, the synagogue needed. And so the rulers of the synagogue, they were usually in cahoots and friends with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And so normally they did not like Jesus. And most of them were given strict orders not to support the ministry of Jesus. But you got to understand about something about Jairus. He was in desperate need. His little girl was sick. She was about to die. And he would do anything to save his child. Listen, great parents do anything to save our children. And he was willing to even go to a man that the Pharisees probably encouraged him not to even deal with. He went to Jesus, and look what the text says. It says that he fell at his feet, and he pleaded. Listen, we should never be too proud to plead and beg God to save our children, to save someone that we love. We have to call on God. We have to ask him. And he went to Jesus. He fell at his feet in a way that you normally would not fall at another man's feet. He fell in a worship state. He fell in an humbling state. He fell down at Jesus' feet and he begged Jesus, will you please come to my house? Well, many of us don't want Jesus at our house. We want to leave Jesus right where he is. He, listen, it's okay for me to have you at church, Jesus. It's okay for me to worship you at church, Jesus. It's okay for me to praise you at church. But listen, I don't want you coming to my house. But this man begged and pleaded for Jesus to come to his house. And let me tell you, if you allow Jesus to come into your house, good things will happen. Jairus knew, Jair, Jairus knew that if Jesus came to his house and he said this, just touch my daughter, put your hands on her and she would be healed. Listen, she would live. He says, come to my house. He says, my little girl, he wanted, he wanted him to come with him. My little girl, is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she can be healed and live. And Jesus done what? He went with them. He went with them. Then the text says, while he was still talking, some people from his house, probably some servants, came and said, hey man, your daughter's dead. Don't bother to teach you no more. The She's dead, man. Just come on home. Leave the teacher where he is. But this is what Jesus says. Hey, ignore what they're saying. Just ignore them. And there are many people in our life who we need to ignore. People who tell us not to serve Jesus. People who tell us, hey, man, ignore what them people are doing at the church. Man, why are you wasting your time going to your church? Why are you wasting your time on Sunday? This is a good day for you to do other things than going to that church. This is what Jesus will tell you to tell them. Ignore them. They came and said, your daughter is dead. Jesus said, hey, ignore what they're saying. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Don't be afraid. Jesus knew that Jairus was scared, that he was afraid. He was afraid that what they said was true, that his daughter was dead. But he told him this. Jesus told him, he said, listen, don't you be afraid. Just believe. Believe in what? Believe in me. Believe in God. You came here for a purpose. You came here for a reason. You came here because you believe in my healing power. You knew that in the past I have touched people and I have healed them. Don't give up on your faith right now. Don't you start fearing right now. You keep believing. And so Jesus went with him. 
He didn't let anybody go with him or follow him except Peter, James, and John. And when he came to the house of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. And when he went in, he says, why is all this commotion and all this wailing? What's going on in here? He said, this girl ain't dead. She's asleep. And, and see, these professional wailers and criers, they were normally hired by the family so that they can parade the body of the person through the streets so that everybody can cry out to God on behalf of the soul of this person. These professional wailers, these professional criers, they were crying, they were wailing because they were there to support the family. And all of a sudden, when Jesus said, she's not dead, she's asleep. The crying and the wailing turn into what? Laughing. Look what it says. They begin to laugh at Jesus. That's what it says in verse 40. But they laughed at him. And let me tell you, people will laugh at your Savior too. People will laugh at your God. They'll laugh at your faith. They don't believe like we believe. They think we're silly. They think we're crazy. People will laugh at us because we say that we are Christians, because we say that we are children of God, because we believe that Jesus has healing power, that we believe that God has all power in his hand. People say, man, you crazy to believe that kind of foolish stuff. They don't even believe that there is a God. But this is what Jesus tells us to tell them. Ignore them. He tells us to ignore them because God is real. God is a healer. God will make a way out of no way. And so ignore them. And look what Jesus done. When they start laughing at him, look what it says. After he put them all out, what'd he do? He put everybody out, everybody laughing. He put them all out. There are some people in our life that we need to do what? Put them out. There are some people who don't believe in your God, who don't believe like you believe, and they're laughing at you secretly and making fun of you. These are the people that we need to get rid of. They're not your friends. Jesus put them out. We need to start putting some people out of our life. And then watch this. He took the child's father and mother and the disciples that he brought with him. He took the girl by her hand. He said to her, Talitha kum. This means, little girl, I say to you, get up. And immediately the girl stood up, walked around, and she was 12 years old. At this, they were completely Astonished. Jesus said, ah, she's not dead. She's asleep. What is Jesus saying about this? Was the girl dead? Yes, the girl was dead to everybody else. The girl is dead to us. The girl is dead to the wailers and the criers. The girl is dead to the parents. But to Jesus, but to God, death is just sleep to him. Why? Because nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is too hard for the Son of God. And Jesus knew that death is just a form of sleep to him. He's saying, I can do anything. I can even raise the dead. He said, you know what, man, this ain't nothing for me. She's just in a sleeping state to me. Little girl, I say, get up. She walked around. She walked around. Whatever her sickness was that had her down, not only was she resurrected, but she was healed. It's obvious she couldn't get out of bed. That's why the synagogue ruler came to Jesus. He knew how sick she was. He knew that she was on the verge of death. 
But Jesus not only resurrected her, Jesus healed her. She got up walking around like it was nothing. And it was obvious that while she was down, who knows how long she's been in that bed? Who knows how long she's been sick and she was down? And Jesus healed her, he resurrected her, and she probably had no appetite. And this is what Jesus said, listen, she probably haven't eaten in a few days and he knows that. She's healed, she's resurrected, give this baby something to eat. She walked around, they were amazed. And so listen, this short story, if you don't get anything from this, this is what I want you to learn in this midweek, is that God can do anything. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And the power that God has, Jesus also has. He has the power to heal. He has the power to resurrect. He has the power to uh, call out demons. Jesus has all power in his hand because he is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He is the image of the invisible God. And so listen, I pray that this lesson has caught you in a good place this week. And so I can't wait for us to meet up again. I can't wait for us to worship together one more time in the house of God. So please keep lifting me and my family up in prayer. I'll keep lifting you and your family up. So God bless you until we meet again. I love you and I thank you. Have a nice night.